Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to today's lesson. Uh, we're looking at IELTS writing task one for the academic exam. Uh, and today we have got a table uh, that we're going to have a look at. Um, we're focusing on um, the details paragraphs. So this is the second part of the lesson from last week. So if you want to check out the first part when we went over um, planning uh, and writing overviews, and coming up with paraphrases that was covered last week. Uh, I'm gonna have a quick uh, review of analyzing the question so that everyone remembers what we're looking at because it's been a week. But uh, this was the question we had. It said, uh, the table gives information on consumer spending on different items in five different countries in 2002. Um, summarize information by selecting and reporting main features and make comparisons where relevant. So, um, I'm here with a few of my students. Uh, guys, what do you find the most difficult thing about uh, tables? Because I know lots of people don't like tables. So uh, Camina was saying, uh, summarizing the data, the picking out key features, What's tricky in the details paragraphs? Or have you all got so good at them now that you don't have any problems? So can we are saying uh, grouping can cause trouble? And I think like reporting relevant data, because especially with tables, is very difficult um, to know exactly what we're going to talk about. So you don't really want to talk about every single bit of data. What, how can we get around that? What's a good way of rather than just, because it's nice to mention most things, but we don't want to mention every single piece of data. Because you, if you do that, you're just going to end up with far too much uh, information. So what's going to be a nice thing? Yeah, Camino's saying give ranges exactly. Try and I would call it clumping. Like you clump data together, you find data that you can put together, and you go, okay, okay, this is the maximum value, this is the minimum value, and all of those categories fall into that. And so you can, even if you get some, you know, really really big tables, you can just be like. And everything else on the table fell between this range and this range. And then you've covered everything on the table. So giving ranges is a really nice idea. And we'll have a look at that later. Um, just quickly, I want to go over uh, the analysis. So obviously, this is a uh, table we mentioned. Uh, the purpose, this is really important to understand when you're picking out key features. Are they compare and contrast? Are they trying to report data over time? Or well, sometimes they're trying to do both. So if we look at this, is this a compare and contrast, giving data over time, or both? Yeah, compare and contrast, exactly. Uh, and why is it important to know about is compare and contrast? What kind of uh, key features do we look for when it's compare and contrast? Good, yeah, highest and lowest. So we're not worrying about anything over time. We're not in worrying about things increasing or decreasing because that's uh, something over time. Compare and contrast is just talking about what's the highest, what's the lowest. So it gives us an idea of what to look for. What's basically the biggest figure? What are the smallest figures? Uh, and which ones really stick out? So just because something is a small figure doesn't mean we have to uh, report it. So let's find a good example of this. So if we look um, for food, drinks, and tobacco, so to me, the big figures are quite noticeable because Ireland and Turkey are like quite a lot bigger than everything else. So again, we're thinking higher and lower. So we cover these two, these are the biggest. But when it comes to the lowest, I mean, yes, Sweden is the lowest, but is it remarkably lower? 
Well, I, I mean, Sweden, Italy, and Spain, they're all very similar kind of figures. So in this instance, just because this is the lowest doesn't mean we have to report it. Again, if we look at clothing and footwear, like Italy seems to be by far the highest, but everything else is like six or five, right? Everyone else is kind of the same. So again, we don't really need to be mentioning Sweden as the lowest. We just looking for the thing that jumps out at us. Uh, and again, if we're looking here for the leisure and education, is there anything incredibly low? Like this is 1.98, this is 2.2, .2, they're kind of similar. 3.2, 3.2. So again, nothing really jumping out at me. So remember key features are the things that jump out at you. And at the moment, nothing's really jumping out at me there. Um, how many categories have we got? So yeah, we've got two parts we could go by. We could either go by country or the categories up here. Generally, I would recommend grouping by country. If you have countries, because all of these apply for all the countries, it, it makes more sense grouping by country than it does by these. Um, Obviously, it's, it's possible to group that way, both ways. Uh, but I think generally, if you get countries and you're like, which one should I group by? Should I group by the top of the x-axis or y-axis? I'd be coming here and choosing the countries. When would it be more logical maybe to choose the top? Because we've got five and three. What numbers might change that? My logical grouping. Because if we group by country, we're going to have to do three and two. And if we group by this category, it's going to have to be uh, one and two. Hello, Mary. Welcome to the class. <laughs> so at the moment, this is three categories. When would I maybe group by this top? If there were how many categories? So basically, if I've got maybe instead of having three categories, if I have two categories here, then I wouldn't be thinking about grouping by country because I've only got two detailed paragraphs. So if I've only got two detailed paragraphs and up here there's only two categories, then this would be, make more logical sense. Again, maybe if up here there was four categories, well, four categories is an easy number to divide by two. So again, that would be a very logical way of grouping in my detailed paragraphs. But if the top and the bottom are both like these odd numbers, so here we've got three categories, here we've got five, then choose a country, is what I'm saying. Okay. So, or if you can, go with the easy divisible numbers, because uh, that is a logical way of grouping. Uh, but if there isn't, and you've got countries, countries are generally the best thing to group by. Um, verb tenses that we're going to use. So does it tell us anything about time? Tamara says, yes, it's the past, and Camila says, no. So I'm going to agree with Tamara. So Camila, where are we going to find it? Don't forget, check in the question. But don't just check in the chart. It says in different countries in 2002. So we know that this is talking about in the past. So what tense are we going to use? 
and we're going to be using past perfect and past continuous and no, simple past. Everything here is a completed action in the past. So uh, simple past. Okay. Um, do we need the passive voice for this type of chart at all? No. Passive voice, we're going to be using map questions, process questions, but these tables don't need passive voice. Uh, unit of measurement. Percentage, yep. So we want to be talking about percentages. And is there a key? Nope. Okay, so we don't have to worry about anything in a key. That's great. So these are our answers. So then this is what you want to do. Whenever you come across an AC task one question, you want to analyze the question, ask yourself these kind of questions, because uh, it's going to really set you up and give you a very good idea about what we're going to talk about. So key features. I mentioned there's two key features about food, drink, and tobacco, one key feature about clothing and footwear, and one about leisure and education. So what can we mention about food, drink, and tobacco from looking at this? Thinking in terms of biggest and smallest. So yeah, Ireland and Turkey are the biggest. What would be maybe another key feature about food, drinks, and tobacco? And highest overall, exactly. So if we're looking at this, we can see these numbers are a lot higher than these. These are all double-digit numbers. These are all single-digit numbers. So to me, that is something, again, it jumps out. Um, so this is biggest, and these are the two biggest. Uh, clothing and footwear, what jumps out to you? Italy, yeah, this is by far the biggest. Nothing else is really jumping out, so that's a key feature there. Uh, leisure and education, what would jump out to you about these? Okay, Camino say, yeah, there's nothing. They're all pretty numbers, but there is something that is actually worth noticing. So I don't think there's any individual country that is worth pointing out. But as Tamara said, yeah, they have a very small percentage overall. So what was our maximum? Like 4.35 is our maximum. So even the largest percentage for leather and education is lower than the smallest percentage for clothing and footwear. So I think mentioning that this this category as a whole is the lowest is worth mentioning. This category as a whole is the biggest. And then in this category, that's the biggest, that's the biggest. So Turkey and Ireland are the highest uh, in food, drinking tobacco. Closing and footwear, Italy is the highest. Um, leisure and education, lowest for all. And then food, drink, and tobacco are highest. Um, the reason I've got this first, second, third, uh, it was to indicate when we were looking at this, what I'm going to mention first. So I was going to mention this point first. I was going to mention this point second in my overview. I was going to mention this point third in my overview. And I was going to mention this point last in my overview in terms of things that are important. Okay. So it was just the order of how I was going to talk about this in my overview. But the key here is identifying this information. And then for grouping, how would you group? So we're, we said we're going to group by country. So we've got to do three and two. What would make the most sense?
Yeah, Ireland and Turkey. Why are we going to do Ireland and Turkey? Yeah, they are the highest of the highest category. So it makes the most sense if we have the two highest of the highest category, uh, then everything else we can work out from there. Because nothing else is really like sticking out here for what we should, how we should group. So our grouping is going to look like that. So with that said, that's it. let's jump into our details paragraphs. The details paragraph one is Ireland and Turkey. So how are we going to talk about this? What makes most sense first? So are we going to talk about Turkey's three figures and then Ireland's three figures? Or are we going to go, oh, food, drinks, tobacco in Ireland and Turkey, clothing and footwear in Ireland and Turkey, leisure and education in Ireland and Turkey? So which ones do you think is going to be a more, bit, bit more concise? Just talking about Turkey, then Ireland. The reason I'm saying Turkey is it's the highest here. Um, talking Turkey, Ireland, or going into the details of every single one, one by one. I think just talking about the countries individually. So if you're going to group by countries, whatever you're grouping by, talk about those things one by one. So Turkey, talk about Turkey's figures. Then Ireland, talk about Ireland's figures. So we can start off with Turkey. So um, makes most sense to go from biggest to smallest. So we're going to talk about this, this, this. How can we uh, talk about this this first part? So what I think would be a nice thing to do, because uh, we want to use some complex language. We're going to talk about Turkey. We're going to give the figure. And then we're going to use a relative clause to talk about whether that figure is the highest or the lowest. Because okay? that, that gives us complex grammar, which makes sure we're ticking the grammar box. So. I'm going to throw this over to my students in the chat. How can you talk about the figure for Turkey and then in a relative clause afterwards say that this is the highest percentage in this category? We're just going to focus on this first figure to start with. Anyone who's at home, try uh, writing along with us. Uh, the only way you improve is by practicing. It's a bit like watching cooking shows. If you watch someone cook something, it's all very well, uh, but you don't really learn how to cook it until you've actually done it yourself. So really get the most out of these videos and make sure you you try practicing this at home. Okay. Thank you, so I've got a sentence here from Camilla. Maybe my chat box so I can see it. 
So Turkey accounted for 32.14% of total expenditure on food, drink, and tobacco, being the highest figure from all categories. So let me check. So if you use the word accounted for, this means that the expenditure for food, drink, and tobacco was divided between all of the categories, and Turkey accounted for 32.14 of that. Is that accurate? Okay, so we don't want to use accounted for here because you're not actually 32%. This is 32% of Turkey's expenditure, but it's not of all the country's expenditure. If we add up all these figures here, this is not going to add up to 100. So how can we... If you want to use accounted for, we could reword this slightly. I'm going to show you how we could do this. So food, drink, and tobacco accounted for 32.14% of of Turkey's total expenditure. See, so this is talking about the percentage of national consumer expenditure. So these are the percentages only for these countries. So 32% of national consumer expenditure in Turkey was on food, drinks, tobacco. 6% was on clothing and footwear. 4.35% was on leisure and education. And then all the other figures were on other things. It will, the graph doesn't cover. So this is and this account for 32.14% of Turkey's total expenditure. Being the highest category from all categories, uh, being the highest figure from all categories. Here is going to be true because it refers to all categories, but what categories are we come, uh, talking about? Are we talking about these categories or are we talking about the countries? So I think here it would be better, yeah. To mention the countries. It's a bit more specific. So here, uh, uh, Camila has used this being the highest, which is fine. How could I use a relative clause to do this? To add this information. So instead of saying being the highest, <laughs> was the highest figure for all the countries. And remember, we wanted past tense. Past tense, because it's all 2002. So yeah, which was. So this is a really nice way of adding information using relative clauses. This is complex grammar. And we're also doing the comparing and contrasting. So a lot of students go, well, I'm not comparing to other things here. It was the highest figure. Here you are comparing where relevant. So this is a relevant comparison. So you were doing exactly what the question is asking us to do. Okay, so we, we've got something for our tomorrow. Percentage of national consumer expenditure uh, by food, drink, and turkey in, <laughs> in Turkey was about 32%. And that are for clothing and 
football made, footwear made up 7%. And the figure for leisure accounted approximately 4.5% of total spending. Okay, so we've got a few articles and prepositions that we need to fix here. So this percentage, is it specific or not? Yeah, Tamara, exactly. We're talking about the specific per percentage here. We also have this um, structure here, you see X of Y. Whenever you see these structures, X of Y, they normally take an article. So sometimes it's A, X of Y, sometimes it's Z, X of Y. But almost always in English, if you see X of Y, it needs an article. Yeah. I really can't type today, I don't know what's going on. So the percentage of national consumer expenditure. Uh, we don't say consumer expenditure by food. The preposition is actually not in. You have expenditure is on. So you normally spend on food. So the percentage of national consu consumer expenditure on food, drink, and tobacco in Turkey was about 32.5%. And uh, that of four, so we can't have these two prepositions. Uh, one of them is correct, one of them we don't want. Yeah, I would do this. Actually, if I look at that of clothing, that four clothing, either one would work. <laughs> now I look at it, but the choose, don't put two of them. If it's exact, shouldn't we write exactly the same? Um, so Camila, that's a really good point. If you've got exact figures, should we write the exact figure? Um, personally, I would. Like In um, a lot of your charts, you're not gonna get exact figures. This is accurate. So if you can use an approximation, especially if you're gonna get really big figures, maybe let's say you've got populations, then you can use these. Um, but I would, if they give you exact figures, there's no need to make approximations. So we can just write the actual exact figure. Uh, but at the same time, as long as your approximation is close to 32.5, this is 32. So here I would say probably rather than saying 32.5, it's closer to 32 than it is to 32.5. So this would be 32 here or yeah, 32.2. But you see where it's all getting a bit confusing. Should we write 32.2? Should we write 32.2? Or we can just write 32.14. And so there's no confusion. We do have the exact figure. So yes, it is fine to use approximations. And as long as your approximations are close enough, it's not going to be wrong, but you're making your life difficult when, you, when you're given exact data. So it's better to be as precise as possible. So yeah, if you've been given the exact data, uh, it's probably a good idea to use it, okay? But the percentage of national consumer was 32.14, and that's clothing and footwear made up around 7% of total expenditure. Good, okay. About seven. So again, it's fine. I would say we're close to 6.5 and 7. Or should we write 6.7? Or should we just write 6.63 and know that we're at we're 100 percent sure? So it's possible to do this, but again. Um, it's easier for you, and that's what we want. We want our life to be as easy as possible. So it's okay to write this, but I would just use the exact, the precise figures. And that for, for I think for I made about seven percent, and the figure for leisure um, accounted approximately. So remember, if we use accounted, it's always accounted for. Uh, 4.5% of total spending. Yeah.
So obviously this is covering all of the areas rather than just one. What I would quite like, rather than approaching it here, so here we've got this really long, long sentence, there's lots of compound sentences. But here we've got a complex sentence. Here we're using relative clauses. Relative clauses are uh, like a, a big, yay, the examiner sees a relative clause and goes, oh, high level grammar. So maybe having one sentence like this, so we've got this higher level grammar in, and then we can put the extra bit. So I'm going to combine these two sentences that our students have written. Um, let's use something like while so now our, our grammar is a little bit more complex rather than just going um, simple sentence add to simple sentence add to sentence so instead of just making compound sentences now we've got all sorts of complex grammar in here so it looks a, a little bit better uh, for your grammar school okay what was written was not wrong it's sufficient to get band seven. If you're looking to get those higher scores, you want these higher, these grammatical structures. Okay. Uh, okay, so Marisol and Mary, let's have a look at these. So Turkey had the highest percentage uh, of expenditure related to the consumption of food, drink, and tobacco. And here, so this is accurate, what you're saying. So we need either, um, yep. With or at, I always think at sounds better. I don't know, I think this is a style thing. So here we've just added a prepositional clause. So, okay, fine, it's accurate. So Mary, you could use with. Um, so I, my preference is at, with or at both work. But I could make this a relative clause, and a relative clause is a lot more grammatically impressive than a prepositional clause. So how do I make this a, a relative clause? Then we're gonna have which, because it's a thing. Pass it. That's simple. Which was 32.14%. But we don't need to be overly um, clever. So Turkey had the highest percentage. So we've already got the highest here of expenditure related to consumption of food and drink tobacco, which was 32.14%. As I said, now we've got a relative clause rather than a prepositional phrase. Relative clauses, as I said, they're just more complex sentences, there's more complex grammar. It looks better for your grammar school. Okay, so relative clauses, for academic task one, relative clauses are your friends. So it's really good to understand how to use them. And then we have Mary's up here. Have a look. Then again, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying making a prepositional clause is wrong. It's certainly not going to stop you getting a bad seven. But for those higher scores, if you can use these nice relative clauses, it just looks good for you. The proportion for turkey expenditure on food, drink, and tobacco, just spelling it, made up 32.14% of the country's expenditure. which was ranked the first place among all countries. So this is some vocabulary that I want to get everyone out of the, the, the habit of using or this expression. First place, first position. We're never going to use this in academic task one. It refers basically to uh, you running a race. Um, so we want to use uh, superlative adjectives or comparative adjectives. So what is the comparative here? 
the highest, exactly. If it was second place, what do we say? Rather than the highest, we would say, So obviously on this graph, it's not second place, but just imagine that this was second. We just said the second. It was third place, we could be the, the third highest. Okay, so this is a nice way. Instead of writing first place, second place, third place, we're going to use the superlative adjective here, and then first, second, or third. Okay. Or can we say one of the highest? That would also work here. Yeah. So apart from that, nice. We're expressing our information. We've got some comparison here, and we're using some complex grammar. So this is really nice. Can we use these relative uh, clause structures in every single sentence? So let's say for this this question. Mary says, no, why not, Mary? You're correct. Why, why do we not want to do it for every single sentence? What's going to happen to our essay if we start putting relative clauses on every sin single um, sentence? Are we going to have a long essay or a short essay? Okay, yep, so it's repetitive, but also you can end up with a really, really long essay if you, you start doing this for every single one. So this goes back to what the question says. Make comparisons where relevant. So, yep, we want to show a range. Um, so it's not a problem using a lot of relative clauses. This would be the natural way of doing this. But at the same time, you know, here, it's the highest. This is a, definitely something really worth mentioning here. But let's have a look at our second one. If we look at what tomorrow right here, what well, clothing and footwear made up 7% of total expenditure. So here, clothing and footwear, 7%. Right, okay. So it wasn't even the highest. Do we need to mention it was the second highest? No, because it's not a key feature. It's not, not something very important. It's only saying making comparisons where relevant. Maybe mentioning here that 4.35% um, is the highest in this category as well, that might be quite a relevant thing to mention. So these are the kind of things, okay, mention where relevant, but don't compare every single sentence. Otherwise, it just gets out of hand. You end up with ridiculous sized uh, paragraphs. Okay, so we are going to keep what was uh, written here as uh, the part for Turkey. Now, our second part for details paragraph one is Ireland. So using those kind of ideas that I just mentioned, how could we talk about um, Ireland? Remember, only make comparisons where relevant. So if it's, especially in a table, if it's not the biggest, it's not the smallest, we don't need to mention if it's the highest or the lowest. It's only the highest or lowest of where the comparisons are going to come be mentioned. So we can keep our writing nice and precise. So I always think what we write about Ireland is going to be a little bit shorter than what we wrote about Turkey.
Again, if you're at home watching this, practice, write some sentences. How would you go about this? And then apply what I'm talking about uh, to your writing. Okay, nice. So we're starting with moreover. This is a relevant cohesive device. What other de cohesive devices can we use to kind of show addition that we're adding information? So more, moreover, isn't it really nice? Additionally, yep. Furthermore, lovely. And in addition, so you've got four really nice uh, cohesive devices to show that you're adding information so we can vary our language and they're all very academic. Um, do I want to use and or also? No, they're too basic. Uh, and never. We never start sentences with the word and uh, academically or anytime. You shouldn't start a sentence with a co um, coordinated conjunction. And also it's just a bit too informal. It's not very high level. Much better writing something like moreover. Okay, so moreover, Ireland spent 28.9% of their total expenditure on food, drink, and tobacco, followed by 6.4% uh, spent on clothing and footwear, and 2.21% on leisure and education. Uh, cool. I don't think here this is not necessary, this spent, but again, we're just going to keep it as concise as possible. Very clearly just covered what they spent. There's no comparison, so we don't need anything. Um, oh, there is a comma mistake somewhere. Where do I not want a comma? So this comma here is just not necessary. We're not joining uh, independent clauses. So incredibly minor error. These kinds of errors, are they going to stop you getting a band eight? No. So yeah, don't panic. Oh, should I have put that comma there or not? You know, a lot of students are aiming for band sevens. Um, this is certainly not going to change that. It's not going to alter your band eights even. Um, but this works, and then. We can just combine this, what we had before, and we can see that we now have a full details paragraph. Uh, so let's have a look at what Tamara has written. The figure for food, drink, and tobacco in Ireland was 28.9%. Good. Closing footwear was the next category, which accounted for 6.43% of total spending. Uh, good. And while expenditure on leisure and education was only 2.21%. Nice. These while clauses, uh, really nice. Again, complex grammar. Um, everything very accurate. But this would be absolutely fine. Uh, here, um, Maybe we're just making this a bit too long. I think we could maybe make this a bit shorter. Could, so we could maybe just say, hey, clothing and footwear accounted for. So what was written is not wrong. In fact, I'm just showing you how you could maybe make this a little bit shorter. Okay. Um, so good job. Well done. Uh, I'm just deleting this so we can make a bit of room. It's tomorrow's. Do you, uh, any of my Marys? <laughs> have a sentence that I'd like me to look at. Don't worry, take your time. It's much better to be focusing on the accuracy than writing it really quickly.
And if we look at this, you can also see, yeah, we don't really want our paragraphs and bytes longer than this. This is already getting quite lengthy. So this is definitely sufficient for the size of our, our paragraphs. Okay. We've got one from uh, Mary here. And furthermore, the figure for Ireland's expenditure on food, drink, and tobacco stood at 28.9%. And that was both for uh, was six point three percent. He six point four three. <laughs> Make sure we check. So something I would really recommend doing. I said this to um, students when uh, I was doing general training. After both of your details paragraphs. Like once you read it, write a details paragraph, just go back and check every detail really quickly. Just look at the numbers. Are they correct? Now, it's going to take you 30 seconds to check every one of your numbers. But by doing that, it just, you know, these little mistakes, that one mistake, the rest of Mary's essay, essay could be absolutely perfect. And she still cannot get over about six the task response because of this mistake. So it's so important to make sure that we go back and check for these um, these little errors because it's so easy to do. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a native English speaker or if you're writing in a, a second language, and especially you've got the, the pressure from the exam, the stress. We make mistakes. We're all human. So what we can do though is check, and that's going to reduce these. Uh, 29 percent that clothing was 6.43 whereas the least spending was on leisure and education at 2.21 percent yeah i would say maybe lowest spending or least spent the lowest or maybe I think the more natural collocation here would be lowest expenditure. The, the slightly more natural collocation, but again, very, very minor kind of vocabulary issues here, uh, not stopping you getting a bad sevens at all. And that, yeah, this is fine. And how it's written, good. But just make sure. Make sure that we're double checking for our figures. Okay. In the same way, Ireland had the second highest expenditure in food, drink, tobacco, which was at 28.9%. So nice. We've got this uh, again, some relative clauses here, followed by climbing football. But we're at 6.43%, good. While the lowest percentage of the spending corresponded to leisure and education. Yep. Okay. Uh, the only thing here I would avoid is this in the same way. Because it's not really in the same way. You're adding information. They don't have the highest ex expenditure. So it's not the same. So if you're going to use it in the same way, it's going to have to be someone's, something is the same, but here it's not. So one of these uh, cohesive devices we mentioned, moreover, uh, maybe we can have furthermore. Or, and this is an interesting question for you. Do I need a cohesive device? No. So I know ridiculous amount of English teachers who have just got it <laughs> into their head that they're going to tell students to start every single sentence with a cohesive device. It's not great writing. Great writers do not start every single sentence with a cohesive device. It, it looks like uh, you're coming straight for an English class um, rather than actually writing naturally. So it'd be perfectly fine to just start here. So Get out of the habit. Sure, sometimes it's fine. 
but get out of the habit of every single sentence trying to start it with get used to devices because you don't need it. Uh, especially if you use them incorrectly. So like in the same way, for me would be an inaccurate use of a cohesive device. That means it's going to hurt vocabulary, but it's also going to hurt coherence cohesion because cohesive devices uh, clumps into that, that area of your grading. So use them sparingly and make sure they're accurate. Never take risks with your cohesive devices. Um, but apart from that, the rest of this writing was good. So well done. Um, so, well, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, we we put these two together. So here we have an example of how this paragraph could look. So well done. Uh, now moving on to our next one. So our key with this, we already uh, let's look at this one again. This already looks like quite a long details paragraph, and this was only for two countries. We're about to talk about three. What we don't want to do is end up writing some ridiculously long paragraph here. So that means really paying attention here. Make comparisons where relevant. So for Italy, Spain, and Sweden, was there any striking details about them being the highest or lowest? Are you sure? So Italy, Italy has something that's probably worth mentioning. Yeah, like its spending was the highest on clothing and footwear because it was quite a bit higher. Um, the rest, is there anything really striking? That's not particularly low. That's not particularly low. These are all kind of grouped together. So how are we going to group it? <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, So someone mentioned ranges. So um, Camila and Mary were saying ranges. Let's do that. So let's do a range here. We can maybe mention Italy, but then we can range these two. And then we can range these here. I think so. We're going to actually switch the way we're doing is we're going to talk about food, drinks, tobacco in a clump. We're going to talk about clothing and footwear in a clump. And we're going to talk about leisure and education in a clump. So we're not going to be as, um, writing excessively wrong, long sentences. So let's do the first one. Clump one. Food, drink, tobacco, Italy, Spain, Sweden. How are we going to clump all those together? Okay, excellent. Nina's on the case here, writing very quickly. So Italy, Spain, and Sweden spent on food and tobacco 15.77% to 18.80%. Eight zero, fifteen point seven seven. Yeah. So when we do ranges, remember we always go from the bottom range to the bo top range. So this is correct. Here, I would maybe like to say what this percentage of. So Italy, Spain, Sweden spent on food, drink, and tobacco. From 15.77% to 18.8% of their national. To me, I can read this sentence alone now without reading the rest of the paragraph, and I know exactly what all this is for referring to. Without this final prepositional phrase, sure. It's been mentioned earlier in the question, but I think at the beginning of a paragraph, it's quite nice to 
put this in just to be a little bit clearer. Uh, but a good uh, group of ranges. So, Mary, let's see what you got. The consumer's expenditure. Uh, uh, so not on, because if you have expenditure on, it means what you bought. But here we're talking about countries. So if you're referring to countries, the preposition would be... Yeah, uh, the Cuban expenditure for Italy. So for or uh, in would also work. The consumer's expenditure in... Um, and here... It's more natural to actually use the compound now. So again, what you're writing is not wrong, but this is just a more natural collocation. The consumer expenditure in Italy, Spain, and Sweden range from 15.77% to 18.8%. Okay. Very, very clear. Uh, the language here that is being used is nice. Um, I like the fact that everyone is including their Oxford comma. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mary suddenly pointed out a mistake in her own work. Well, not really a mistake. Uh, we need to say what it's referring to. So the consumer expenditure in Italy, Spain, Sweden, range from blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, food, drink. Well spotted, Mary. See you tomorrow. So the figure of food, drink, and tobacco in Italy, Spain, and Sweden. So honestly speaking, I think this is the easiest and clearest way of referring to this data. Um, I've put a comma here uh, to separate this. Um, grammatically speaking, if you don't have a comma, this means you've got Italy is one group, Spain and Sweden are together as one group. So this Oxford comma separates this group from this group. Okay. The figure for food, drink, tobacco in Italy, Spain, and Sweden range from 15.77 to 18.8%. Excellent. Really nice. And we can see how by writing like this, we're not going to end up with this crazy long paragraph, which is the key <laughs> here to not writing stupidly long paragraphs. So well done. Tomorrow, good job. And I have got... Uh, my other Mary. We will see what she's doing. Um, for people while they're waiting, think about how we're going to express the data uh, for the next uh, group. Okay, thank you, um, Marisol Mary. Uh, the percentage spent on food, drink, and tobacco range from 15.77% to 18.80% in Italy. Spain, that's sweet. Excellent. Very, very clear. Very concise. The sense of the structure, guys, by the way, is getting really, really good. I'm really very, very happy to see uh, that you have very clear sense of structure here. So great job. Uh, I only need one, so we'll go with this one. Now, as I said, the next one is going to be a bit different. So we're going to group Spain and Sweden. I think we can put them together, but we are going to mention Italy as the highest because we're going to make this comparison where relevant. So Italy is getting mentioned on its own. And then we're going to group Spain and Sweden. So like I said, Mary, you want to put Italy on its own because the 9% is a bit of an exception. It's the highest. So we've already, we've finished this idea. So after you finish this idea, end of idea, full stop. There's no adding commas. We're not making outrageously long sentences because they're very difficult to read. So full stop, we want definitely, when we're going from group to group to group, new sentences. Having long sentences it does not make your grammar look good. Having long sentences makes your grammar look complicated. 
having complex sentences makes your grammar look good. So using these, um, excellent, thank you. Using these uh, relative clauses, complex sentences, uh, that's what's gonna make your grammar look really good here. Okay, so if we were just going to have the variation, great. The figure, yep. But like I said, I want, I am gonna listen to the question. It does say make comparisons where relevant. And Italy was quite substantially higher for here. So we don't want to put all of this in one sentence. So I'm going to mention Italy, and then after I've mentioned Italy, then we're going to group Spain and Sweden. So let's have a have another go. So as far as just grouping them, fine. But let's see if we can make Italy a little bit more important in the sentence. So here, Spain and Sweden spent 6.5%, 5.4%. Okay. On closing the football game, respectively. Okay, so we clump those two together. Now we've got while, so we've got a complex sentence, so we're using complex grammar, excellent. Italy spent the highest amount of money in all categories um, at 9%. Okay. Accurate, we've got a comparison. We've still not got a ridiculously long sentence, so that's nice. But we have mentioned that Italy was the highest. This is a um, good job, well done, uh, Camila. A nice way of doing this. Okay, Mary, let's have a look at this one. The figure, again, yeah, figure four. Clothing and footwear in Italy was 9%, whereas uh, Spain and Sweden were 6.5% respectively. Uh, Here, I would probably, the, the easiest way to do this, this is, uh, whereas in Spain and Sweden, um, it was, and we're still referring to the figure. Okay. So, figure for clothing in well, Italy was nine, whereas in Sweden and Spain, respectively. Okay, so we've got a complex sentence, so nice grammar. What was special about this Italy figure? I want to add something here. the highest. The figure for clothing in Italy and Italy was the highest at 9%. This comma is actually optional before this final prepositional phrase. Uh, the comma that's not optional is if you start a sentence with a prepositional phrase. Uh, if you have prepositional phrases in the middle or end of your sentences, uh, the prepositional, the comma is um, then optional. Uh, then we've got this, so this is really nice. We've got our comparison. We've got our complex sentence. We've mentioned everything. We haven't got a very long sentence, which is nice. So our paragraphs are not going to get out of control. So again, good job. And what other people are writing this, if people have already written, so if Camilla and Mary, you can focus on just writing the last part. So 
uh, grouping this lot together. <laughs> and then it's going to give us just enough time because we've got a little bit over time for the lesson. I would like to cover all areas. Yeah. The expenditure on clothing and footwear was the highest in Italy. 9%. Good. Uh, here, we want a comma because this, this is a coordinated conjunction. You're separating independent clauses. And that... And again, we can't have these two. So we can have that of Spain. Uh, If you're going to use this that off expression, we could have that of Spain and Sweden. Or well, 6.5% and 5.4% respectively. Okay. Uh, here we're talking about expenditure. So it's, expenditure is uh, uncountable. So you want to say it was. Uh, wasn't respectively. Apart from that, good, really nice, good sentence structure. Well done. And again, all of these nice short sentences, which are not going to make you write 300 word um, essays for your <laughs> part one, because we don't have time to write really long essays. Okay, and while we are waiting, I'm just going to wait for Maricel. Uh, thank you, uh, Camila. And then I will add that and we'll have our full paragraph. Let's have some different people. If we go for clothing, for okay. that so far. Yeah, that's all good. So in terms of consumer spending on uh, clothing and footwear, Italy led these values. So again, led kind of in, implies that we've got these, um, like this race. So rather than just saying led these values, I would just have at the highest oh, value. Okay. So in terms of consumer spending of foot, uh, clothing and footwear, Italy had the highest value reaching nine percent, while Spain and Sweden were six point five percent, five one percent, and five point four percent respectively. Good. We've got a complex sentence here. Everything's covered. Excellent. No problems. And then just for this last one, I'm just going to look at two more. So we're going to look at Camila's and Mary's just so we can finish this off. Uh, because we have kind of run out of time. So all countries spent the least amount of money on leisure and education. Excellent. Uh, which ranged from 1.98% to 1.35% to of their national expenditure. 1.98, is that the lowest? Yes, to 4.35. Excellent. Yep, so that works really nicely. Good job that <laughs> finishes our, our paragraph there. Try and Sure, everything is the same. Ah, so look at this one. The percentage for consumer spending on leisure and education in Italy and Sweden was 
203.22 respectively, while the Philippines of Spain was the lowest expenditure at 1.98. Okay, fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. We've got some comparisons. I would say just to keep your essays a bit shorter, maybe sticking to this. Uh, but I think both are fine, Mary. Uh, this works, that works. Um, there's nothing wrong with what you did. Again, it's just a, a question of time management. And again, you're going to see this in your exam. You know, maybe maybe you've got some time. If you've got some time, maybe write that slightly longer sentence. If you don't have the time, <laughs> write the shorter sentence. Okay. Um, so uh, have these tools in your tool toolbox. You know, be able to write the shorter sentence, but no, okay, I've got a bit more time. I can I can do this. I can add that extra information. But there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, well done. So good job. And again, lots of complex language, lots of complex sentences in here. Uh, you guys, guys have done really well. Good job. So we've managed to write two details paragraphs. Um, so Mary, unfortunately, we don't have a time for any more. We've already gone over by about 15 minutes. So um, thank you so much. You guys are welcome to give uh, Tamara some um, feedback on that. So thank you to everyone who came along to today's lesson. Um, I hope you saw some good ways, some nice grammatical structures that we can use, like use those relative clauses, use complex sentences, but keep it simple. Group, group your data, clump your data together. So giving, give your data ranges so that you don't have too much, um, too much data and don't have really long paragraphs. Good luck to everyone in their studies. Please like the video if you found this useful and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.